What's going on all my healthcare professionals? I hope that you're all having a wonderful day. We have finally made it to the final category within the math portion of our ATITs and that is measuring data interpretation. this video, I'd like to go ahead and extend an invitation for you to go ahead and subscribe to me down below. If you haven't already subscribed, uh, where have you been all my ATITs people? Make sure that you hit that big thumbs up to let other people know that are looking for the ATITs reviews that I'm doing a good job and that this information is helpful for you for passing your ATITs like a boss. Let's get started. So to begin, we have to understand data interpretation. Data interpretation questions ask the applicant to interpret data given in different types of graphs. Additional questions may ask you to distinguish between dependent and independent variables in a description of an event. Dependent and independent variables are covered in greater detail within the science portion of ATIT, so I'm going to go ahead and leave a link up here in the corner if you need kind of a review of understanding specifically how dependent and independent variables work within the math portion of ATITs. Let's take a look at an example. The graph above shows the distribution of sales over four quarters. What percentage of sales were sold in the first quarter? We have A, 58%, B, 23%, C, 10%, or D, 9%. So in order to solve this question, we need to understand what the graph is showing us. So we can see that there are four different colors based on the four different quarters of sales. We have a little answer key to the right hand side of the graph, which shows us specifically what each color corresponds with each quarter. So we can see the biggest portion of sales is blue. If we look over to the right, we can see that blue is the first quarter sales, so that we know the answer to the percentage of sales which were sold in the first quarter being the largest was a 58%. The pie chart, like we had shown previously, visualizes how a whole is divided into parts. Another data interpretation graph is a line graph which shows changes over time. Let's look at an example. For which month on the following line chart shows the highest number of YouTube views? A. January, B. February, C. March, or D. April. Taking a look at the line chart, you can see in the bottom each point corresponds with a different month. So our point in January, the number of views we had was about 4.3. The number of views we had in February is 2.5. The number of views in March were 3.5. And the number of views in April is 4.5. When you put all of that data together, you can see that the highest number of YouTube views were done in April. So the correct answer to this equation is D, April. Like the line chart, the bar chart also shows changes over time. However, this type of chart uses bars rather than lines to indicate a value. As you can see, this is the exact same chart that we used in the line chart. However, we're using bars to show the different amounts of views on YouTube for January, February, March, and April. We're gonna quickly touch base and summarize dependent and independent variables. Dependent and independent variables are defined by the relationship between two factors. A dependent variable is a factor that is being acted upon, and an independent variable is a factor that influences the outcome. In cause and effect terms, we can say that the dependent variable is the effect and the independent variable is the cause. For example, Certain plant fertilizers help plants grow more. Our independent variable is the type of fertilizers being given to the plant, and our dependent variable is the amount of height that the plant grows based on those fertilizers. Just like variances, covariances are almost the same, except covariances are defined as a measurement of a joint variability of two random variables. So for example, if the value of x increases, then the value of y increases. If the value of x decreases, then the value of y decreases. This makes x and y have positive covariances. However, in another example, if the value of x increases and the value of y decreases, then the value of x decreases and the value of y increases. This makes x and y have negative covariances. Let's move on to understanding measurements of central tendency. Measurements of central tendency measures the mean, median, and mode of values. So the mean of a data set is the average of the values. You add up all the values and divide them by the sum of the total number of values and that gives you your answer. The median is the middle number in an ordered set of values. 
You place all the values in an increasing order. If there are an odd number of values, the medium value is the middle number. If there are an even number of values, the median value is the average of the two middle numbers. And lastly, the mode. The mode is the value that occurs the most in a data set. It is important to note that sometimes data sets do have one mode or they can have multiple modes depending on the numbers. Let's take a look at an example. Find the mean, median, and mode of this data set. 4, 8, negative 1, 6, 4, 8, negative 4. The mean is found by adding all seven values and dividing them by the sum of seven because there are seven values. So we add 4, 8, negative 1, 6, 4, 8, and negative 4. That gives us a total of 25. However, we have to divide that by seven total value numbers. That is 25 over 7 is equal to 3.6. The mean is 25 over 7 or 3.6. Now let's find the median of the same data set. The median is found by placing the values in order. Negative 4, negative 1, 4, 4, 6, 8, 8. We have an odd number of values, so we're going to go ahead and take the middle number. The middle number, or the median value, is 4. Lastly, we're going to find the mode. The mode is the most frequently occurring value. However, in this data set, we have two different values that are mode. The numbers 4 and 8 are both repeated twice in our data set, so the mode of our values is 4 and 8. And the last thing that we're going to discuss is range. The shape of a data distribution may reveal one of two distribution categories. So the first category that we have for range is a symmetrical distribution. A symmetrical distribution can be divided at the center and will create a mirror image on the left and right side of the dividing line. I have listed an example so that you can see symmetrical distribution. Take a look at another example, a uniform distribution. A uniform distribution shows points spread evenly over the range of the data, but many data sets show peaks when graphed. A graph with a single peak is called unimodal. A graph with a peak in the center and is symmetrical is called a bell-shaped graph or a normal distribution. A graph with a single peak on the left of center with fewer higher values on the right is called a skewed right graph. A graph with a single peak on the right of center with fewer higher values to the left is called a skewed left graph. And lastly, if only a small number of values are separated from the rest, these values are called outlier values. If you haven't done so already, I want you to head over to my website at www.nursechung.com. There I've got additional resources for you for your ATITs exam. That includes additional practice questions for you to take on your own. If you're having some difficulty with these topics, I've also included the PowerPoints if you want to print those out and take notes as we're going along, and as well as the PDF of the Word document where, you know, everybody learns a little bit differently. Some people learn better with PowerPoint notes and some people learn better with just the Word document itself. So go ahead and go over there and check that out so that way we can pass this ATITs the first time and kill it like a boss. So I hope that this information was helpful for you to pass your ATIT's math portion of the exam. I'm going to start doing some Facebook Live videos of review questions and different topics on the ATIT's that may help you get a better understanding and get some additional practice in before you step in there and hopefully reduce that anxiety so that you don't have to worry about this. You know you're going to pass this like a boss. So go ahead and go on over there. Make sure that you like that page. That's facebook.com slash nurse chung where I'll be posting when I'll be doing those videos. That's hopefully at a convenient time for you. If not, they'll go ahead and be posted down here so that you can kind of play along with me as we did over on Facebook, just kind of on your own, your own practice. But if you're not already following any of my social media, go ahead and check me out. I'm at Nurse Chung on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. But until next time, I hope that y'all are having a wonderful day and I look forward to speaking with you all again soon. Bye!